bars and restaurants once again opening for indoor service a couple weeks ago. It might be time for everyone to have a refresher on the legal concept, which is known as Dram Shop Law. Tom Sinus joining us from Sinus Dramus Law Firm, as he does every weekend. First and foremost, Tom, I guess, talk about the basic concept of Dram Shop Law, because it sounds kind of intimidating. It does, and it's an old phrase, and I, I can't exactly remember where it comes from. And it's not the technical term that we use in the law, but it's a shorthand phrase to describe the issue of what kind of liability does a licensee of alcohol, so someone who has a license to sell alcohol, what kind of liability do they have if they serve a patron and that patron then goes on to injure or kill someone else? And in Michigan, we have a specific statute that sets forth a number of rules and limitations when a a bar or a restaurant, or as the statute calls, a retail licensee, when they can be liable in that instance if that happens. Okay, so I guess when can a bar or restaurant be liable if someone is injured or, God forbid, killed by a patron? Okay, so the, the, the two most important rules to remember here are, first, minors. Obviously, liquor licensees are not allowed to serve minors. And if they do serve a minor and that minor goes on to injure or kill someone else, then that subjects the bar to potential liability. There are certain defenses, like if the minor uses a fake ID, for example. The other concept the statute uses is what is called visible intoxication. That means that if the bar or restaurant serves someone who is visibly intoxicated and that visibly intoxicated person then goes on to injure or kill a third party, then again, with some peculiar your rules, the bar or restaurant could be liable, but you have to first have that showing of visible intoxication. And from there, there are some other required showings. So you have to establish what the law calls proximate cause, meaning that the serving to that visibly intoxicated person was the proximate cause of the injury or death. Then there are even more specific rules about providing notice. Once the person who's been injured has retained a lawyer, they have to provide notice to the restaurant or bar within a certain number of time. And then the statute further says that the if the bar or restaurant is going to be sued under this theory, then the drunk driver also has to be a part of that lawsuit. In other words, the drunk driver can't settle his or her claim with whoever they injured, and then the injured person go on and sue only the bar. So there are some very peculiar rules here, and the idea here is to recognize that there may be liability if a, if a bar or restaurant overserves someone, but there also are, are, are rules that have to be strictly followed in order to pursue one of these cases. And they can be, as you can imagine, a bit complicated. Yeah, dicey indeed. Tom, where do people track it out for more information? Oh, they can find us online at www.sinusdramus.com. You can shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com or give us a call 616-301-3333. Okay, good stuff as always. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Derek.